today I'm going to be talking about limited palette painting and acrylic paint and just uh, I'm going to do a little painting, fast painting, just to demonstrate some of the uh, features of acrylic paint and also the uh, what the colours can do. Now the first thing we'll talk about is uh, limited palette colour and what that means is that you can do a painting with just four tubes of paint, black, white, red and yellow ochre and you can mix pretty much the whole range of colours from those four colours. What that does is it frees you from the bugbear of beginning painters, which is, oh, how do I mix that colour again? Um, you can easily uh, mix all the colours from these four colours, and I'll show you how. And it allows you to concentrate on other things and not worrying about colour. And really the only way to learn about colour is to paint a lot. So if you start off with limited palette, you'll, you'll find it gives you a little bit of confidence because you can get the colours quite quickly. And um, then you can, with a limited palette painting, you can actually fire it up by adding a bit of full-on colour towards the end. The colours you have in a limited palette range are black, white, oops, my white's got a little bit of red in it, um, a yellow ochre, and a red. Now you can mix from the red and the yellow, an orange. You'll need quite a lot of yellow to kill the red. You can also mix from the black, the white and the red. Something that looks like a purple. Let's put a bit more black in to make it more bluish. And then from the black and the yellow, you can mix something that looks pretty much like a green. And depending how black, much black you put in, uh, you'll get a deeper green. So you can see I've got a black, a white, a yellow, a red, a purple and an orange, which is not a bad palette really. Some of you will be saying, where's the blue? You get something that looks pretty much like a blue from mixing the black and the white. Or it does all the same things in a picture that a blue does, which is to be cold. So that's your other ingredient is your grey. And you've got all different permutations of those colours as well. You know, you can weight your orange more towards red or more towards yellow. You can weight your purple more towards uh, black or more towards red. So now I'll just do a little quick limited palette painting to demonstrate um, sort of how you might use these in practice. And um, I've cheated a little bit because I'm using a blue background um, just to fire the whole thing up. So coloured backgrounds are something I really like because instead of working on a white canvas and putting a drawing on and then tediously colouring it in, you're much better off to put a coloured background in first. And in it actually doesn't matter what colour because you can leave some of it showing or kill it off completely. But if you put a colour in first, you've already got a painting. So all you're doing then is adding to the painting. So my advice is to kill off the white. Um, some, artists, some artists would say leave the white because it gives more luminosity to the colours uh, because the white shines through the colours. And if you want to use that, I agree that uh, keeping the white is a good idea underneath. White pencils are also a fine thing if you're working on a coloured background, so you can put your drawing in. You can either draw with paint or you can um, work to a drawing. It depends on your individual preference, really. Um, white pencil not showing up very well on this blue, so I'll draw with the paint instead. Let's uh, draw with the yellow. So what I'm doing here is a cat walking on a wall. I paint largely from imagination rather than um, uh, using the motifs. So I'm sort of making it up as I go along. So I'm going to use my green, darkened up a bit. I'm using a um, sort of a 10 ounce canvas here, so it's got a bit of dimple in it, which means it lends itself to dry brush effects. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So 
So I suggested starting with a coloured ground. The other thing is to uh, have a figure on a ground, so that's your next step. Then, the fabulous thing about acrylic paint is it dries really quickly. For some people that's not a fabulous thing because you can't push it around for long. You can get a thing called retarder which you add to the acrylic. That slows down the drying a bit. I quite like the fast drying because you can go really fast with the painting as it starts to dry or you can push it around a little bit when um, you're in the early stages. So let's get our wall happening. A little bit of light yellow for the top of the wall, concrete. The other nice thing about acrylic is when you're painting wet in wet is you get all those dynamics happen when you put wet paint into wet paint. So it tends to mix a little bit on the edges. It tends to produce halos around things if you paint around them. All those things are quite interesting. The other thing you can do is paint with light. So if I've got a figure and I want to make it look like it's um, got some volume to it, I imagine that the sun's shining from there and that everything in that direction will have a little bit of a light, lighter colour to it. The colour I didn't mix up before is a pink, so we'll do that now. If I want to warm up the edge of my cat, then work a little bit of pink into it. I talked about wet and wet. You can scumble one colour into an, to another, so you get a sort of gradation happening. Normally I use these paper pellets for uh, mixing paint on. They're okay if you're using the acrylic straight out of the tube, but they tend to wrinkle a bit with acrylics because the water makes it wrinkle. Mainly used for oil paint, but they can be quite handy for mixing up. So now I'm putting a little bit of a, put some, let's put some darks in. Uh, here's a tabby cat. Okay, let's bring our orange into play. One thing that a lot of painters who love colour do is um, if they're going to put an orange down then they'll put the complementary opposite colour underneath it, which is the dynamic we've got happening here. So blue is opposite to orange on the colour wheel. Uh, so when you paint an orange over a blue, the orange will sparkle up a bit through the blue and make the orange appear more intense. You'll also get bits happening where the, like here, where the blue tries to shine through the um, orange and you'll get an interesting complementary grey mix out of it. So we're after our image but we're after what the paint can do as well. Sometimes sort of things that you want to happen happen in the brush, brush strokes, other times it doesn't. So you've got to sort of surf on that a bit and see what you can make of it. Okay, let's give this guy some eyes. I'll stick to the yellow ochre just to the, for the purpose of the limited palette exercise. So we'll need a bit of white in that. I talked about retarder before. Um, it's a chemical called um, glycogen, I think it is. And you can add it to the acrylic paint and it will make it, acrylic paint normally dries in about 20 minutes, but you can get it to stretch out to say 40 minutes if you really want to push the paint around while you're painting. Oil paint sort of stays wet for about a day or a day and a half, so that gives you a lot more time to push it around. Some of the advantages of acrylic paint are that obviously it dries fast. Um, it, it tends to be very uh, textury. So you get these lovely things happening with the dimple of the canvas. Uh, the disadvantages are that oil paint dries about a tone darker than when it's wet. So you have to learn how to predict what tone it's going to be uh, when, when you're finished. The other thing is that 
Acrylic paint holds a lot less pigment than oil medium. So a lot of people think um, acrylic paints are less intense because they're plastic. The real reason is that the medium doesn't hold as much pigment as oil. And that's why oil paintings always look a bit more vibrant in terms of colour than acrylic paintings. So if you really love intense colour, you probably need to go for oils. The thing I like doing is starting a painting with acrylic when you want to go fast and when you want a bit of fast drying and then um, finish off with oils. One thing you can do while the acrylic is still wet is a thing called scrivito. Not sure if I'll get it away with it here because it might have dried a bit already. Um, but you can scratch through the paint to the different colour underneath. So it could be dark colour with a lighter colour underneath it or a light colour like this with a darker colour underneath. It's actually a quite good way to start a painting. You put a coloured ground on the canvas and then you put a drawing, maybe an enlarged photocopy over the top and trace with the end of a brush through or a biro and you will get a scraffito drawing in the wet paint underneath. The other nice thing about acrylic is you can buy a whole range of mediums which make it do different things like gel mediums which make it very shiny and blobby or um, mediums which make it thick and able to build up to really thick textures. Um, so that's uh, one other advantage of acrylic is that range of mediums you can add to it. Let's put some stars in. The beauty of this fast painting thing is when you make yourself go really fast, you tend to overcome your own facility a bit. You know how we all work sort of want to make nice pictures, but if you go fast, uh, interesting things tend to happen with the paint and, um, and a lot of more happy accidents. And because acrylic paint dries so fast, you can always sort of go over and fix up mistakes later anyway. But um, to some extent, I like to build mistakes into, into the paintings I do because some of them you, you keep and leave and others you can um, just get rid of. You can, if you make a mistake, you can cover it up completely. If, you really, if colour does really interest you, I think it's uh, really worth doing an experiment with starting off a painting in acrylic and then working over it in oil. And you get this really interesting dynamic between the two types of paint because acrylic tends to have a drier feel to it, whereas uh, oil painting has a lovely lush uh, build-up that happens and that more intense colour. So the combination of the two really produces quite beautiful things. Um, in the underpainting, the good things that acrylic does, and in the oil painting, uh, those lush, beautiful things that oil painting does. Mm -hmm.